Hello, welcome to today's webinar. This is Tom Carpenter, CTO at CWNP, and I have Robert Bartz with us today. He's going to be talking to us about BYOD and mobile device management, a very important topic in our organizations today. Well, as you probably know by now, this is the third in a series of five webinars in what I'm calling the Week of Five Webinars. And this, of course, is a service that we're offering to the community to help you get up to speed on several different technologies this week that will help you in your lab environment as you're preparing for your CWNP certifications and also in your day-to-day -day operations. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Robert and let him talk to you about BYOD and mobile device management. Hello, this is Robert Bartz with 802 Technology Solutions. Today's webinar is about Bring Your Own Device, or commonly known as BYOD, and Mobile Device Management with Wi-Fi Technology. The agenda for today's webinar includes a quick look at the CWNP Certification Program. Then I want to discuss the difference between portability and mobility, at least as it pertains to wireless LAN technology. Portability, where we were back in 1997, when wireless LAN technology was first standardized, and mobility, more where we're at today with the advancements with mobile devices and wireless technology. Then I want to talk about what I like to call the three sides of BYOD. Like they say, there's more than one side to every story, and I think BYOD has about three of them. I want to give an introduction to mobile device management technology, the different possible solutions, whether it be cloud-based or on-premise, and we'll take a look at many of the features that are available with mobile device management technology. These mobile device management solutions uh, have a lot of features that allow you to manage either BYOD, devices that are employee-owned, or corporate-owned mobile devices on a variety of different platform types. A lot of great features that will make your job much easier as a network administrator. Finally, we'll take a quick look at the CWNP 15 Years of Wireless Conference. This is the conference that's coming up on September 22nd in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's two and a half days and there's still plenty of time to register to attend the conference. Now let's take a quick look at the CWNP certification program. The first certification is CWTS, Certified Wireless Technology Specialist. This is an entry level certification that is intended for first line tech support, sales, marketing, or anybody that wants to become familiar with standards based 802.11 wireless LAN technology. That takes us to the CWNA, Certified Wireless Network Administrator which covers all areas of wireless LAN technology, from standards to radio frequency, antennas, hardware, site surveys, security, and more. That will then lead you to the advanced certifications, the first CWSP, Certified Wireless Security Professional. This will focus on all security-related wireless LAN technologies, as well as the CWAP, which is a Certified Wireless Analysis Professional, this will focus on layer one spectrum analysis and layer two packet analysis of wireless LAN technology. And the newest certification is CWDP, Certified Wireless Design Professional, will help with the design of a wireless network. The CWSP, AP, and the CWDP are all advanced certifications that in conjunction with CWNA will help you to obtain the CWNE certification. Keep in mind that these previous certifications, CWNA, CWSP, CWAP, and CWDP are all requirements to become CWNE, but there is other criteria that must be met. For more information on the program, visit www.cwnp.com. I want to start off by talking about portability. Portability is the ability to move a device from one place to another very easily. Let's take a, a portable television, for example. Uh, you could have a television in one room, uh, unplug it, carry it to another room, plug it in, and be able to watch TV. Portability from a wireless LAN perspective was more in the early days of wireless networking 
And this is where you had access points deployed around the organization that were there to extend the coverage or to extend the wired network, provide coverage uh, to areas of the building and extend the wired network, allowing people with devices that had the technology to be able to connect to wirelessly. Uh, not real heavily used, more for coverage and as an extension uh, to the wired network. So what would happen is if you were sitting in your office, for example, and you had to go to a conference room and you're on a wireless notebook computer, you would have to pick up your computer, walk to the conference room. While you're in the area of coverage where that access point was near your office, you would have a connection. Once you left that area of coverage, then you would lose a connection because there was no more uh, access points in that area. Once you then entered into the area of the conference room that had access point coverage, you would basically reconnect to the wireless network. So this was far from a smooth transition. This is basically a disconnect and reconnect to a network uh, on the wireless side of the conference room uh, based on the fact that you did not have coverage in between those two areas. That brings us to wireless mobility. Unlike uh, the previous example, portability, with wireless mobility, we can now maintain a connection uh, to a wireless network throughout an organization, whether it be an office building, whether it be university campus, a hospital, uh, any place that has wireless, which by the way is expected to be pretty much everywhere now, Every place that has wireless, people expect it to work fast, they expect it to work well, and they also expect it to be secure. So the expectations of the user base uh, are pretty high. Uh, so the devices we have today um, are, are much more advanced than they were uh, several years ago. Uh, not too long ago, we had a notebook computer that weighed you know, 10, 12 pounds, and we would be able to, to carry it from our office to the conference room uh, and not even think about uh, maintaining a connection. Whereas the devices today, whether it be a smartphone or a tablet or even a smaller lightweight computer, uh, all have that capability uh, of being a, a mobile device. So these uh, multi-function devices in many cases have cellular functionality, have a wireless LAN functionality, and in many cases a, a user could do their entire job from, from one small a portable device. So the the uh, maintaining a connection and having good performance uh, on that wireless network is, is very very important and a key factor uh, in a lot of places today. Uh, unlike the portability factor when we had to disconnect uh, from the network when we moved from the office to the conference room uh, with mobility we can now maintain that connection because of the way the networks are designed uh, for the technology. So now you notice you're in the office, as you leave the office and walk towards the conference room, you leave that one cell uh, which you were connected to, uh, that one access point coverage cell, you move into an area that was lacking uh, coverage uh, previously, which now you can, can transition to smoothly, uh, maintaining that connection, whether it be on the phone or whether it be a on your tablet device and then move to the new uh, uh, access point that also provides coverage for the conference room. Uh, so this is a much more desirable uh, situation uh, with today's technology that we have wanting to maintain a connection uh, throughout an organization. Now let's spend a few minutes on the infamous BYOD. That's BYOD, not BYOB. That was the college days. And uh, I'm sure it's 5 o'clock somewhere, just not here. BYOD, bring your own device, is uh, a technology that's, uh, or a concept, I should say, uh, that's really picking up. And uh, so many places, so many people like to use their own personal devices uh, on the network. And although that sounds like a great idea, uh, in some cases uh, it has its uh, uh, disadvantages as well. So here's what I like to call the three sides of BYOD. First we have the upside. The upside is the, the benefits, the advantages, uh, the positive thing behind using 
your own device uh, on the the network, whether it be uh, the office, uh, the university, any place you work or play, uh, being able to use your own personal device. With every upside, a lot of times there's a downside. And the downside is going to be the disadvantages, the, uh, the things that uh, could be a negative effect uh, by allowing people uh, to use their own devices on the corporation's network. And the last one is what I like to call the other side. And this is what the users don't see. Uh, this is the behind the scenes stuff uh, that uh, it has to be taken into consideration for wireless networking when people are allowed to use their own devices, uh, such as the, uh, the management part of it, the security part of it, uh, privacy, legal issues, uh, all the things that, that most users uh, don't realize have to be taken into consideration uh, in order to allow them to use their own personal devices uh, on the corporate network. Let's start off with the upside of BYOD. This is the, the good stuff. This is the positive. This is the benefits of allowing people to bring in their own device and use it on a corporate network. Uh, one of the main things is cost savings to the organization. The organization is happy because when people bring their own devices, they don't have to worry about supplying the device to them. So it can be a significant cost savings, especially in a large organization. Uh, some places, not only companies, uh, education for example, uh, some schools are leveraging the fact uh, that students will bring their own device, such as a tablet, uh, to, to school every day, and they will be able to use that device on the uh, school's network and therefore, the school does not have to pay uh, for to supply uh, that student with a device. So cost savings uh, can be a significant factor uh, in allowing people to use their own devices uh, on the network. Another one is the comfort level for the employee. Uh, people can come to work, and when they get to work or even to school, uh, can now bring their own device with them and something that they use all the time. Um, they're familiar with the device, they're familiar with the features, uh, no learning curve. Uh, so this is a, a big upside uh, for the individual. Uh, they're happy because of the fact uh, that they're able to use their their day-to-day -day device uh, on the network uh, and, and not have to worry about, you know, learning how to use a new device or, or worrying about, you know, what it can or cannot do uh, compared uh, to the device that they use every day uh, on their own. Another one is connecting uh, and working from anywhere. Now, uh, some of you, that may not sound like a, an upside, but for a lot of people, it is an upside because uh, this will allow you to basically uh, connect to a network and be able to work uh, from that network connection regardless of where you're at. So if you're traveling, uh, going from you know one facility in one state to another facility in another state, uh, you would be able to you know connect to a network at the airport or you know uh, when you're on the bus or the train and, and be able to uh, still uh, be productive and be able to have that uh, ability uh, to perform a job task you know, regardless of where you're at. Uh, and finally, um, increased employee job productivity. Uh, like I just mentioned, being able to, to connect from anywhere uh, will allow you to uh, be more productive. Not only that, uh, also the happy employee who is able to use their device uh, will be able to be more productive as well. So uh, increasing the employee job productivity it is another key factor. Now keep in mind uh, the upsides that I'm showing you here is not all inclusive. This is these are some of the key upsides that I pulled out uh, to, wanted to point out uh, to allow you to understand the benefits uh, or, or the positive side of allowing BYOD. So cost savings, a big one, uh, comfort level for the employees and letting them uh, be happy uh, using their own device connecting from anywhere to not be able to miss uh, an important meeting or 
to be able to to still be able to work uh, in areas where you could not before, uh, and then to be able to uh, have the employee productivity be increased by allowing them to use their devices on the network. Now the downside. Like I mentioned earlier, for a rep side, a lot of times there's a downside. And unfortunately, BYOD is no different when it comes to the downside. So we'll take a look at some of the disadvantages or the potential disadvantages of BYOD. Again, this is not a complete list, but just some that I figured were important to point out. The first one, increased cost to the organization. Now, wait a second. Just a few minutes ago, I said it was a cost savings to the organization. Well, that's true from the upside. People bring in their own device. The company doesn't have to supply them with one. Save money. However, on the downside, we have things like mobile device management, the administration costs, the overhead, and being able to maintain the additional devices that are now usable on the company's network. So in addition to the corporate issued device, they may have their own device that they're also going to be connecting with. Security concerns. This is a big issue. Uh, you have a user that comes to the office or to school or whatever the case may be and connects to the network using their own device. And this will then allow them to access, and I'm not talking about a guest network, I'm talking about the actual corporate network. This will allow them to then access corporate resources and install applications download information, do their daily job tasks from their own device. They are done for the day. On the way home, they decide to stop at the grocery store or the gym, and the device gets lost. Or uh, worse, the device gets stolen. So now, uh, the device is in the hands of an unauthorized user that basically would have access to any information stored on that device and potentially uh, be able to access information on the corporate network if they knew where the person worked at. So this is a, another big concern of the downside that uh, can be addressed through the use of, of mobile device management uh, solutions. Uh, so we'll talk about that more a little bit later on. Uh, the next one is network capacity issues. Some of you may know that wireless networking or 802.11 wireless networking uh, is uh, contention-based and half duplex. So what that means is only one person at a time or one device at a time, I have to stop saying people because one person may have three devices, one device at a time will be able to send information across the air to another device, whether it be an access point to a client device or a client device to an access point. So they need to win contention in this half duplex technology to be able to send information across the air. So we have, instead of one device per person, now three devices per person. We have tripled the number of devices, potentially. And can the Number one, access points. Can the infrastructure devices handle the load? And number two, is there enough aggregate bandwidth available to support all the devices that are now coming through at higher speed because of the advanced technologies uh, with more information that's going across the network? The last one is the administrative challenges. And the administration challenges are more of things like the uh, mobile device management, uh, being able to have the network administrators understand multi-platforms, uh, you know, whether it be an Android or an iPhone or a Blackberry or Windows Phone, whatever the case may be, uh, understanding the different platforms that are available and, and being familiar with the different features and the different operating systems. Uh, that could be a, a real big challenge uh, for the network staff. If, if it's company-issued devices, uh, the organization can choose uh, which devices are going to be used, 
and therefore would have more control and less administration. So uh, uh, again, uh, uh, another concern is, is the administration side. So the downside increased cost of the organization, uh, security concerns, uh, which we'll address again later on. Uh, network capacity is a real big one. Uh, and then, of course, the administration challenges. And this brings us to the, the final of the three sides of BYOD, what I like to call the other side. Not really a word, but, but it is today. What goes on behind the scenes? So this is going to be the management. This is going to be the administration, uh, making sure that the network infrastructure organization is able to adequately support and provide good, satisfying quality of service uh, for the users and for the devices that they that they bring onto the network. The first one is mobile device management, and and this uh, is is pretty phenomenal technology. Uh, mobile device management solutions uh, allow you to do a lot of different things with the devices, multi-platform support, etc. Uh, to be able to uh, make sure that the devices are going to work well uh, and, and perform like they should, whether it be corporate-owned devices or whether it be uh, people bringing their own devices or a combination of both. Choosing a solution is another important thing to think about. Uh, some, uh, you know, different manufacturers make various solutions, whether it be cloud-based or whether it be on-premise. Uh, and, and the decision is yours as to what's going to work best uh, in your environment. Uh, so choosing a solution, uh, if you have certain Wi-Fi manufacturers, uh, will partner with mobile device management companies uh, and, and incorporate or integrate their solution in with their hardware. So when you purchase their infrastructure devices, you have a, a, a mobile device management solution that will work, work with those as well. So. Uh, uh, whether it be that or whether it be standalone, you know, integrated into the actual manufacturer's uh, wireless technology, or whether it be a standalone solution, uh, either way, um, you, you will have uh, the chance to uh, be able to do some phenomenal things when it comes to taking care of the devices on the network. Uh, and, and finally, uh, the variety of features, and, and that's what we're going to get into next. That brings us to our, our next part of the webinar, mobile device management also known as MDM. Uh, mobile device management technology is really cool stuff. Like I mentioned earlier, it's some, some really great technology. If you're going to allow or do allow people to bring their own devices and use them on the, the company network, uh, or if you have company-issued mobile devices, you don't really have to have a mobile device management solution. However, it's something really to consider because the benefits of uh, having an MDM solution will really help with the configuration, installation, support, security, you know, everything that has to do with mobile technology that's used on your network. Vendor selection, you see a list here. This is not an all-inclusive list. These are some that I was able to come up with uh, and, 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 and allow you to see that there is quite a few different manufacturers that provide some sort of, of MDM solution. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you have a wireless LAN infrastructure, uh, some manufacturers incorporate or, or have partnered with MDM companies to be able to allow an all-in-one turnkey uh, type of solution. So when you buy their infrastructure, you can then choose to use uh, their mobile device management, uh, uh, supported mobile device management uh, platforms as well. The solutions themselves come in two uh, possibilities. The first one is software as a service solution and some of you may be familiar with this if you have cloud-based uh, wireless infrastructure devices uh, they are basically uh, do not have a hardware controller on site and you connect to the internet and manage the access points uh, in the cloud. Uh, same concept here mobile management uh, mobile device management solutions and um, uh, manu uh, several manufacturers make the service as a software solution. The other one is on-premise. Now this is where you have a physical infrastructure uh, within the data center on your organization's uh, premises that are going to provide the MDM software and provide the MDM uh, uh, products right there uh, on-premise. 
Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to both of these, and we'll take a look at those here uh, coming up shortly. So the the, the, the choice really is going to vary on several factors. Um, some people do not like or, or, or are not fond of, I should say, software as a service cloud type of technology. However, um, when I say not fond of it, they're not fond of the fact that it's in the cloud. They do like the concept of the software solution. So some of these companies offer uh, the ability for you to bring the software as a service into your organization. So you have an on-premise software as a service solution, uh, which allows you to basically bring the cloud into your data center. Um, so that's another option. So again, some of these manufacturers make one, both, uh, one or the other, or both possible solutions. And like uh, I mentioned, uh, both of these offer many features. So uh, the features here coming up soon are going to be covered under either you know one or both of these, and uh, uh, a very exhaustive list uh, of what uh, what these mobile device management uh, softwares can actually do for us. So vendor selection, uh, it's up to you. Uh, which type you choose, again, is going to be something that uh, may have an impact based on your specific organization, and and you'll see that uh, both solutions do offer a common feature set. Uh, whereas some say it may have more more unique features, but a good common overall feature set uh, of the basic solutions that you you can choose from. Okay, now I want to explore the vendor selection part of this a little more. Uh, this might uh, kind of make you think about this a little bit more uh, than you might have uh, by 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 taking everything into consideration. Uh, in my opinion, just like many other things in technology or life, there's really no one-size-fits-all solution. So um, choosing a, a, a MDM vendor is going to depend on, on your unique organization and determining what your needs are, uh, the expectations are, and making sure that it is going to work well uh, for you. Once you buy a solution, you pretty much buy a solution. Uh, it's not like buying a pair of shoes that, you know, get it home and it's the wrong size, or you don't like the color, you take it back to the store. Uh, this is something that uh, usually requires a significant investment, and you want to make sure that it is going to work and satisfy the needs of the organization um, in which you're, you're going to deploy it. Now, one way to, to determine that is to try before you buy. You know, I, I'm a real big fan of try before you buy. And many of the of the manufacturers of these MDM products uh, do have trial versions or allow you to sign up for a trial period uh, in which some point uh, they will then allow you to see what it does and, and how it's going to work for you. So, you know, definitely uh, don't underestimate uh, how, how the different solutions will vary and, and how one may be a better solution than the other. So uh, sign up for a trial, give them a call, you know, fill out the online form, whatever it takes uh, to, to make sure that this is something that will work for you uh, because the last thing you want to do is, is invest time and money into a solution and realize that it's not, it's not going to work well for you. Uh, by, by doing the try before you buy, it allows you to get a good understanding of the product. Uh, so the features, there, there could be things that, that you had not thought about uh, in your initial investigation or, or, or research on these products uh, that may not come up until after, you know, you get it in place. So, uh, you know, a pilot program uh, with some key areas and, and key individuals uh, will allow you to, to see how this is going to work for the organization and, and to be able to... Uh, Make sure it's a good it's a good choice. So picking the appropriate uh, pilot group, uh, uh, trying it out uh, in those organizations, whether they're heavy heavy users or light users, a combination of both, uh, will allow you to be able to make sure that you do have something that's going to satisfy the needs of the organization, you know, and make your life easier. I mean, basically, when when we when we choose management solutions, uh, regardless of the technology. Uh, one of the purposes is to to help make our job a little bit easier. Um, does it meet 
the needs of the organization or does it meet the organization's requirements? And, and I mean, this is all part of the process. So, so making sure that it does satisfy the needs of the organization, making sure that uh, you can do what you want to do. And like I said, being able to, to uh, discover uh, things that you may not have thought about uh, prior to deploying a solution is, is something that comes up after the fact. So um, does it meet the needs of the organization? Does it meet the requirements? Making sure that it's going to work for you. And then the last thing here uh, on the vendor selection is the platform support. Making sure that it's going to support and allow the what you need to do with the various platforms. If if your company does or is going to allow people to bring their own devices, you have to think about every possible device platform that's out there, whether it be an Android, whether it be an iPhone, a Blackberry, or a Windows phone, and, and more, and uh, the different mobile operating systems that are out there, the way applications work differently, the different types of push notifications. Uh, all these are all part of the process. So uh, making sure that it supports all the appropriate platforms is something that really needs to be considered. Uh, so on above and beyond just the research, you know, if it does support the mobile platforms, how well does it work for them and how well is that uh, for you to be able to, to use that um, platform support? So multi-platform support, a very, very important part uh, when you're choosing a mobile device management solution. Now I want to talk about the two common types of mobile device management solutions, software as a service and on-premise. First we'll talk about software as a service or SaaS. Say that five times fast. The advantages and disadvantages are always good to know. The advantages for software as a service start with no hardware investment is required. Now think about it. If the software is being hosted by a cloud service provider, you really don't need to have any physical investment of hardware on premise. And that could be a significant cost savings when it comes to the type of mobile device management software that you're planning on using, the technology you're going to use. The installation and setup time can be very short compared to other solutions, namely the on-premise solution. So, uh, again, another advantage is you don't have to worry about setup because it's a matter of, of creating an account and, and connecting to the um, cloud-based solution and then basically configuring uh, based on your unique uh, type of, of, of um, installation, uh, whether it be an office or a school or a hospital, you know, whatever the case may be high availability compared to other solutions. Now I'm saying other solutions and basically uh, this is referring to the on-premise solution. So high availability meaning that uh, unlike in your data center where you have you know some servers and, 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 and some potentially clustering and backup servers there and, and backup solutions, uh, with the cloud-based solutions these are going to be uh, at various different locations around the US, around the world and are going to be able to always have uh, some type of availability, some type of redundancy and backup uh, in the event that one was to fail or not being uh, made accessible. Uh, speaking of accessible, a cloud, a, a software as a service solution or cloud-based solution can be accessible from anywhere with an active internet connection. So uh, worldwide, as long as you have an internet connection, uh, you should be able to access this software to perform any management tasks that you would need to perform. Uh, finally, the last advantage, at least the last one that I have listed, again, there, there could be others, but, but I'm just showing you some of the key ones, uh, less maintenance for the organization. Uh, so you don't have to worry about updates, you don't have to worry about, uh, um, you know, continuing to, to provide uh, some sort of, of, of technical support or maintenance to the actual solution because if you have a software as a service provider, they're going to handle all that for you. So typically you get an email, oh, by the way, uh, we're going to go through an update this weekend and uh, kind of give you forewarning. Uh, in some cases, you can opt out not to, to take it at that time. 
uh, but the benefit is you will be able to then you know have the most current up-to-date solution uh, any fixes uh, you know any kind of uh, uh, bugs that were, were determined could be then fixed and and it's going to be less of a headache uh, for you as a network administrator so so those are the advantages of software as a service the disadvantages with every advantage we have a disadvantage in most cases with disadvantages you're going to have recurring monthly or yearly fees potentially and, and probably not potentially this is probably a fact so uh, in some cases you're going to have subscription fees uh, license fees it could be on based on the whole platform itself or it could be based on a, a specific uh, uh, user base user count of devices that you're going to support so uh, that that's something to consider and uh, in many cases you're going to be able to buy this in a one three you know five year type of subscription or fee so it, it may not be as painful if you're paying for a multiple years at a time however uh, it is still going to be some kind of fee required in most cases uh, now I mentioned earlier the advantage is that uh, you can access it uh, anywhere with an inter active internet connection uh, on the downside uh, you have to have an active internet connection uh, so if there's no active internet connection available uh, then you basically will not be able to perform any additional management uh, or control or changes uh, to the actual uh, software that's managing the devices so um, that that's one thing to take into consideration uh, is that uh, if you don't have an internet connection then you're going to have very very limited capability to do anything at all security rears again here so security may be an issue and when I say security may be an issue I mean uh, where exactly is this being hosted you know where is the cloud and uh, understanding uh, uh, that you don't know where it is and these could be located anywhere across the world uh, so uh, realizing that the information uh, you don't have any control over where it is now uh, regardless uh, in, in most cases uh, that should not be an issue but some people always uh, create that as a concern may be slow and subject to latency well uh, this is true because the internet is providing the service so uh, when you think about it if, if you have a slow connection or uh, if um, uh, there's uh, potential busy connections uh, then that could cause latency which will then cause uh, uh, problems just from accessibility uh, you know authentication issues you know whatever the case may be so uh, that is something to think about that you don't have much control over where it is at who's hosting it what kind of uh, infrastructure they're providing and what kind of um, uh, potential uh, other type of information could be going across that uh, causing a a slowness uh, in the actual whole process uh, and finally the last disadvantage is limited control of the actual product. Um, this is basically software that you are accessing over the internet. And you are at the mercy of the provider as to how they're going to handle that. So uh, when they do an update, an update is going to be available. Uh, and you may or may not uh, choose to use it at that time, but the bottom line is in some cases you may not have control over that. And you are going to get what they give you. If you do not like the new interface, too bad. That's what the new interface is. It's just a matter of getting used to it. So this is, uh, again, cloud-based software as a service uh, solution, advantages and disadvantages. One more thing I did want to mention is that some software as a service providers give you the opportunity to install this in your data center. So if you do not like the cloud concept, at least being in the cloud, you can have the cloud concept in your data center. So some of these uh, disadvantages may not really be valid if you're using a, a VMware version of some sort of a mobile device management software. And that's because uh, you have now basically put that cloud in your data center. So uh, this is just something to keep in, in mind that you may get the benefits of the cloud-based solution without having to worry about it being 
you know, across the Internet uh, and something to take into consideration. Now we're going to take a look at the, the other side, the other type of mobile device management solution, which is the on-premise. So again, we'll see the uh, advantages and disadvantages of this type of solution. The first one on the advantage side is complete ownership of the investment hardware and software. So in other words, you own everything. Uh, you own all the servers, all the infrastructure devices, you know, all the hardware components that are required to make this work. You also own all the software. So you pay for it up front and uh, basically completely own everything. Now what that does is take away that recurring, you know, monthly or yearly fees. So due to the fact that you paid for it up front, it eliminates those extra fees that you may, those recurring fees that you may have uh, throughout the whole ownership process. So these, these are a couple of key things uh, to take into consideration before um, you purchase, you know, either an on-premise or a, a, a software as a service solution. Uh, an active internet connection is not required for management control functions. Unlike the software as a service, remember, uh, you have to have an active internet connection for that. If you don't, you basically can't do anything. You can't make any changes. You can't do any control over it. Uh, you can't see a lot of reporting uh, activities. So a benefit to the on-premise is uh, it's there, and um, uh, you have the ability to, to see and connect to this without having to rely on an internet connection. Uh, and, and the last advantage, at least the last one that, that I want to list here, is it can be maintained within the company data center. So uh, you have physical access to it, you have total control over where it's at. You know, unlike the software as a service, it's based in the cloud. You really don't know uh, where that is. And, and those that are leery of, of cloud-based solutions, uh, this could be a more comfortable uh, type of solution for them for that reason. So uh, you can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it, and and, and uh, do anything you want with your with your uh, on-premise solution because you have it physically, um, you know, at at your fingertips. And in all fairness to the software as a service solution, we need to discuss the disadvantages of the mobile device management on-premise solution as well. Uh, first uh, is going to be the cost of the of the whole process. So the initial investment, uh, somebody's got to pay for it. That's the bottom line. Uh, purchasing all the needed equipment, servers, other infrastructure devices that may be required, as well as the, the MDM software itself, will need to be purchased up front. So rather than, than uh, you know paying licensing fees and, and such uh, over a period of years, uh, you will have to pay for all that initially uh, when the system is, is purchased. Uh, installation set up overhead uh, could also be an issue. So uh, not only installing the, the software, but getting the hardware set up, getting the hardware configured to actually support the software, installing the MDM software, and then configuring it for your unique situation. Uh, with the software as a service solution, it's just a matter of connecting the internet and then being able to configure the, the MDM software uh, to work with your environment. But in this case, you have to do uh, the, whole, the whole shebang. Uh, also, potentially may need additional resources uh, such as consultants uh, or contractors uh, because this could be a time intensive and um, could be some place where you need some assistance. So you may have to look for, for outside help as well. Uh, finally, uh, it's going to have to be part of the backup recovery plan. So just like other data on your network servers, etc., cetera, uh, everything is backed up, part of the disaster recovery plan, and this will have to be included uh, in that process. Okay, now that you're introduced to two of the common solutions, the uh, on-premise and the software as a service, let's take a look at some of the different features that are commonly available with mobile device management solutions. Again, this is regardless of whether it's a software as a service or if, a, if it's an on-premise solution. Uh, a lot of the features are common across both, plat both platform types. Uh, the first one is application, or as we call in the mobile world, app distribution. Uh, so we're talking now the ability to push applications using push technology uh, to the mobile devices. Uh, this is a nice feature because it will save the user from accessing or needing to access an app store to be able to, uh, to download an app that's going to be needed. Now, uh, if it's a BYOD type of device, 
uh, then they may have specific apps that they use on the personal site. If it's a, a company application or a company specific application, uh, then that will be beneficial because you can push that app down to them uh, from the enterprise app store or, or having to have control over what that user is actually putting on their device uh, from the corporate side of the house. So application distribution using push technology or app distribution, very, very uh, nice feature. Compliance reporting. Uh, so depending on the type of business that you're in, uh, this is something that may be required uh, to maintain compliance with that particular uh, model. For example, PCI is a big one now. Payment card industry, which has to do with credit card processing. Uh, HIPAA uh, for the medical side of the house is another uh, real popular one. I mean, the list goes on. Graham Leach, Bliley, uh, DOD, uh, you know, all the different types of compliances that are out there. Uh, you are required to provide reports to make sure in compliance and with you know, with the mobile device type of, of, uh, of technology, this is even, even more challenging because uh, of the devices being in the wild and needing to be able to have uh, control over those devices to make sure that the organization is in with compliance uh, with these specific uh, specifications. Content management. Now, we're talking being able to manage any content that that device it needs to access. Uh, and we have a couple of different ways of doing content management. One is uh, uh, centralized content management, and the other one is distributed content management. So centralized content management uh, can be server-based, uh, very similar uh, to the on-premise um, MDM solutions we talked about earlier. So you have servers on site, server-based solutions that uh, they will come to your site, uh, that, or that I mean the devices will connect to your location, and pull that content from there. Uh, the other one is cloud-based, which is very similar to the software as a service where it is basically hosted on, on cloud-based solutions. Uh, so the, the centralized content gives one local place to where they can go and, and pull that information that is needed uh, for that device to do those uh, specific tasks. Uh, the other one is distributed uh, content uh, management, which basically means that you're gonna have uh, servers uh, scattered around uh, the WAN that will allow the device to connect to a variety of different locations to be able to pull that that information. So either centralized or, or, or distributed decentralized content management are two ways that this can be handled. Device registration uh, using a self-service portal, at least that's one way to register devices. This is an onboarding method that will allow a user, either a person, but typically a personal device or a, uh, a non-corporate uh, device, will be able to connect to the Wi-Fi network, uh, register that device, and if the user has a current account uh, within the, the organization, which they probably do, such as a, a Active Directory account, they'll be able to log in and then uh, use their Active Directory account, and this is gonna be less overhead on the administrative staff less administration because basically it's, it's done by the individual once they connect to the network. So self-service registration uh, using a self-service portal is a very nice feature that will help lessen some of the burden uh, of the mobile device management uh, uh, staff. Location-based services. Now we're talking different types of wireless communication that can be used for either locating or keeping track of devices. And uh, the different types of, of wireless technology I'm talking about are things like Wi-Fi, uh, global positioning satellite, GPS, RFID. These are all things, uh, all types of, of wireless connectivity that may help with location-based services. Uh, within the location-based services, uh, two common types. One is geolocationing and the other is geofencing. Geolocation is the ability to be able to find that device or locate that device geographically. And, and uh, this actually is, uh, is, is pretty interesting stuff because if a device is lost or stolen and location-based services is enabled on that device, which in most cases will be based on the corporate policy, 
you could physically track that device down to a pretty close area uh, of, of uh, proximity from where it is. And again, this can be done through GPS, this can be done through you know cellular type of, of, of uh, location tracking, whatever the case may be, um, whatever type of wireless connectivity is in use. But uh, this um, uh, is pretty interesting stuff. So being able to find a device in the event that it becomes lost or stolen, know exactly where it's at. Uh, the other part of that that I mentioned is geofencing. And this is just like any other kind of fence, uh, basically keeping uh, the device uh, within a specific area. So well, when, I, when I say keep it, I mean more electronically. So you know that that device is within a certain boundary and once it leaves that boundary, uh, then you're notified and, and appropriate uh, action is taken. So being able to, to kind of keep track of where that device you know, is physically located or where it's being used. Uh, again, location-based service is very, very cool. Multi-platform management and support. So, you know, chances are if, well, if you're using or allowing BYOD, it's not chances are, it's a fact that you're going to have multiple platforms. Not every employee is going to have the same device. Uh, if you have a corporate and do not allow a corporate mobile deployment, do not allow BYOD, that's another whole story. A corporate deployment well, um, you can be more standardized on a specific platform and mobile OS, et cetera. But with the BYOD, you have no control over that. So uh, being able to manage the devices, whether it's Android, iPhone, BlackBerry, don't make fun of my BlackBerry, uh, Windows Phone, whatever the case may be, uh, the mobile device management solutions can handle uh, multiple platforms uh, and, and making... Um, management of these devices on the employee-owned BYOD side, uh, basically a much easier task. Okay, to continue on with some of the mobile device management features, password control. We're talking, you know, not just password resets, which is, is always nice to be able to do, but also uh, different types of, of password restrictions, such as, you know, account lockout, uh, how many how many incorrect attempts before they, they're locked out, uh, not able to, to connect. This is a nice uh, security feature in case the device is, is lost or stolen. Uh, what is the length of the password? How complex is it? Uh, things like that. Typically, uh, passwords, when it comes to, to mobile devices, at least passcodes, are, are typically a four-digit PIN, um, which is a very, very common uh, four, I should say four to six or four-digit PIN, which is very, very common. Uh, to be using. Uh, is a, a password allowed to be bypassed for emergency purposes? Uh, things like that. So password control, a very, very important feature when it comes to networking in general, uh, as well as mobile device technology. Policy enforcement, things like backup and restore policies. Uh, these, uh, you know, uh, making sure that it is uh, handled correctly, to that that device is, is backed up as it should be, and, and, and the ability to be able to recover information, acceptable use policy you know, what they can and cannot do and what you're agreeing to. Uh, policies that handle the device features. You know, many of these mobile devices, smartphones, tablets, etc., you know, have uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, uh, things like cameras. Uh, so you may want to be able to uh, uh, restrict the Wi-Fi connectivity to certain types of SSIDs and, and maybe disallow the use of the camera. Uh, different type of applications uh, that may be installed on the device, so you can use policy enforcement uh, to control that as well. Uh, this is really cool, remote lock, unlock, and wipe features. So if a device is lost or stolen, uh, you can issue a command, or the administrator can issue a command to lock that device and uh, prevent anybody from accessing any information on it unless they're able to try and, 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 and you know, break that, that pin or that password that was on there. Uh, unlock the device. So if a user is out in the field uh, and they forget their passcode, they could call in a help desk ticket or call the mobile device management uh, administrator, and then they could, through a few commands, issue an unlock command. It would not only unlock it, it will also uh, require them to change it to a new passcode. Uh, so that's a nice, a nice feature to where if they, you know, forget the password passcode, they're able to 
still access the device by being able to unlock that. And then, of course, the remote wipe feature, which is handy in the event the device is, say, uh, lost or stolen and cannot be located or unable to be located. And uh, you may have company sensitive information on there. Uh, with mobile devices, we have a, an option called containerization. And you have the enterprise container, or, or you can set up this way. You have the enterprise container, and you have the personal container. So if somebody brings their own device, you can have the, the enterprise uh, software data, et cetera, on that side of the, of the device, and, and uh, the personal information on, on, on that side, of the, on their side of the device. And, and this kind of reminds me, uh, if you're old like me, remember partitioning a hard drive. Uh, you can get a hard drive and, and put several different partitions, one for the operating system, you know, one for data of one type, you know, one for data of another type, kind of the same concept. So they're, they're separate entities uh, and basically are managed uh, separately as well. So when you do a remote wipe, uh, you have that capability to be able to, to wipe out the entire device, wipe out only the enterprise side uh, to protect that data. And this is all done remotely uh, as long as the device has a connection to the internet. Of course, that's going to be a required component. So it is going to have to have a connection to the internet to do any of these uh, remote type of features. Uh, secure VPN communications, you know how important security is, especially on wireless and mobile devices. So uh, the ability to have a nice virtual private network, which is a secure communication between two devices using a public infrastructure such as the internet, maintaining that secure connection uh, is a very nice feature to ensure that any information that goes across the air, uh, if it is intercepted, would be unusable to anybody that was be able to see it because of the uh, VPN technology that was actually put on. Uh, and uh, telecommunications expense management is another uh, interesting feature. And this is uh, something to where you can manage, uh, for example, the data plan. So uh, unlimited data plans are pretty much a thing of the past. Uh, it, it, you know, the, the way uh, cellular devices work now is you basically pay, you know, a monthly fee for the device and a certain amount of data. Uh, once that data amount has been exceeded, then it's going to cost you significantly above and beyond what you're paying monthly. Uh, so the, the unlimited data plans are pretty much a thing in the past. So that way, if you have a limitation on the amount of data you can use, um, there is a way to manage that and uh, be able to control that through, through the use of mobile device management. Uh, type of implementations. Uh, otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to have a, a significant bills uh, from the cellular carrier uh, that are going to have to be covered for those uh, particular uh, charges that were above and beyond what that monthly allotment was. And like they say, all good things must come to an end. Uh, I'm just about out of time here, but I would like one more minute from you just to talk to you about the CWNP 15 Years of Wireless Conference uh, that's coming up. Real quick, I, I would also like to mention that, uh, you know, I've been in, involved with this program since day one. Uh, I actually attended the very first CWNA class that ever ran uh, back in November of 2001, a long time ago, uh, in Denver, Colorado, and I, I have stuck with it ever since. But uh, a great program. It's nice to have a vendor-neutral wireless LAN training and certification available to us. Uh, the conference, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, September 22nd, to the 24th, 2014. Register now at cwnp.com. Uh, if you go there now, there's actually a coupon you can use for 100 bucks off. So the coupon code Wi-Fi100 uh, will give you 100 bucks off off the actual uh, conference price. I also want to mention that uh, my company, 802 Technology Solutions, we're an authorized CWNP learning partner. We're offering a conference and CWDP class special. Uh, so you can attend the conference, which will be included in the price of the class, and then uh, on Wednesday the 24th, after the conference ends, we'll, we'll have a short half-day session uh, that's going to be on the 24th, and then two full days on Thursday and Friday, the 25th and the 26th. Uh, Saturday, we're going to have an optional content review and Pearson View certification testing uh, on Saturday late morning. So uh, that's totally optional, uh, but also included in the price. So for one price, uh, you'll be able to attend the conference and then be able to attend an official CWDP class. And if you choose to take the exam and pass, you'll walk away with the certification. Thanks again for attending. I, I know your time is valuable. I, I really appreciate the fact that you're able to take some of your time away uh, and spend it with, with us here today. 
uh, to learn about uh, BYOD and mobile device management. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.